Another spread I laid out in the June issue of Contact Magazine was about Exercise Diamond Storm. That was a fairly significant Air Force exercise in the Northern Territory involving Australian and United States aircraft and personnel of course. Now I received three press releases about this exercise, one before, one during and one after the exercise. So they were written in the future tense, the present tense and the past tense respectively. So what I had was about a thousand words in three documents, a lot of which was replicated across the three, uh, but all written in different tenses. So I had to find the best bits of each of the three press releases, bring them together in a coherent and flowing manner, and also change all the tenses to past tense. In the end, uh, it wasn't too difficult. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I'm quite used to. So I didn't have a lot of trouble with this uh, editing this story. And in the end ended up with about 460 words to copy and paste then into my spread in InDesign. So with my words now just plonked on the page, I'll come back to them and sort them out later. I'm going to now play with the other elements on the page to see how much room I've got. I'll start with just half my headline, then duplicate the box so that I maintain the same formatting in the second word. Now I need to find an impact photo to open this spread. And while a good afterburner shot is impactful, it's more suited to an ending rather than a beginning. So I need something else for my beginning. And what better for a beginning than a fighter jet pilot right in your face. Now at 460 words, I already know that this story is going to be limited to two pages only. So space is a bit tight with this in fact. And I've got my impact photo and my headline here, which are clashing one on top of the other. Now I don't want to take too much away from the photo. So what I'm trying to come up with here is a blend that allows the photo to be seen through the word and actually gives it some impact as well. And having done that with one word in the headline, I'm going to try and do something else with the other word to see if I can give that some impact too. And one thing to note about this headline is I've used a font called Strokey Bacon. And the funny thing about Strokey Bacon is that it will not export to a PDF file. So I can't use it as a font. I've got to convert it to outlines. Now as an outline, that font becomes a picture box. So what I can do is put a picture inside the word. And then to make it even more tricky, I can use the same photo duplicated uh, and make it look like the photo is escaping from the word. But having said that, it is quite tricky to get both pictures lined up. So now with my headline and my impact photo sorted out, it's time to finesse the actual words just to see how much space is left for more photos and also to get the balance right in the words themselves. I'm going to run the words around the tail fins on that airplane. That should look deliberate and pretty cool. And then also I'm getting the top of that box lined up with the bottom of the photo box on the left. And that's all to do with the balance and aesthetics that I keep harping on about in other videos. So now with my words sorted out, I know how much space I have left for photos. This photo was a horizontal, but if I crop it into the vertical, even if I chop off parts of the airplane, it's still an impactful photo when used as a vertical because there is less dead space in it. The next photo I'm choosing was taken with a long lens, which gives it depth compression. That means there's very little dead space in this photograph. I'm also going to use the trick where a part of the airplane is escaping from the photo, 
which will give the photo more impact through the curiosity factor. And with a black border behind it too, it adds to the effect that the tail is escaping. Now I've got a little bit too much white space beneath my headline, so this is a good opportunity to add a subhead to fill that gap. And the last thing I want to do is just double check who the photographer was. Make sure it was the same guy in all photos, except for the pilot of course, and give that photographer the credit he's due. Now I was going to leave it at just the two pages, but this photo is just too good not to use. However, with no real story to go with this, except a deep caption in the photo, it's not worthy of two pages, but cropped into a vertical, it actually makes a very impactful fo photograph on a single page. I also know that there's this video around as well, so I can get some extra information from the video that isn't available in the photo and combine that to get just a little bit of uh, reading onto that page which justifies using the impactful photo. So eventually using the deep caption, some detail from the video and a little bit of searching on the RAF website, I have actually come up with a small story to go with this photo. So that justifies using it. To add even more impact to this extra spread, I thought I would isolate the tail here from the dust and put the headline in behind the tail. I'll also use the same font that I used in the first pages, that being strokey bacon, and adding a bit of drop shadow lifts it out of the dust as well. Now if I change the color and add some blending effect, it will be even more sympathetic to the headline on the first page. And after adding the final photo credit on this excellent photo, my work here is done. This three page spread took me just under two hours to complete and I'm quite happy with it in the end. If you want to see the finished product make sure you check out issue 62 of Contact magazine on our website www.militarycontact.com